Hi everyone and welcome back for week three of Introduction to Archaeological Illustration. This week is ceramics, my absolute favorite. I'm so excited to get started with you guys for week three. Um, just a quick reminder, you can always uh, shoot me a question um, if you're having a little bit of trouble with the quizzes or you don't really know um, where to start with the readings, um, you know, you can always reach out to me. Um, but for now, we've got a lot to get into, so let's get into it. For today, we're talking all about ceramics. So we're gonna be doing fragments of ceramics versus rim shirts um, and the difference between those and then pottery reconstruction illustration. Uh, we're gonna get into the question that I get a lot. How can I draw this? I'm not an artist. Um, and my sort of formula for a decent uh, ceramic or pottery drawing. We're gonna get into the regional specifics of ceramics illustrations because your formatting for um, illustration changes a little bit based on where you're doing your work. Um, and then I have inserted a little video sped up for you um, of me drawing a rim shirt I just made <laughs> in my yard with a bot. Um, and I will kind of narrate while we're watching that. So this week is strictly ceramics. So what are ceramics and what are the categories of ceramics? Firstly, you might sometimes hear ceramics referred to as pottery. And while this is not incorrect, uh, ceramics are not always pottery fragments. So for the categories, um, we have sherds, which can be a wall sherd, um, it can be a base sherd, um, which can often be hard to discern from body sherds if it doesn't have you know, a foot or um, the curving on it, which can make it um, distinct as a base. We also have very tiny pieces, uh, very tiny shirts that are sometimes referred to in some camps as buckshot. And then we come to rim shirts, um, which is a shirt that has a discernible rim from the ceramic still attached to it. I have seen very tiny pieces of rim attached to very large uh, body shirts, and I have seen very thick rim shirts where it's almost just a rim and it kind of looks like a weird rock um, instead of a rim shirt. So, and then we have complete vessels. Um, and then, while not really a category of shirt, uh, we have what are called refits um, when you're collecting and sorting through pottery, which is um, when you have several pieces probably found in the same area together, um, that can be fitted correctly back together by someone who does that. So not to play favorites, but rim shirts are mine. Um, for me, I believe that rim shirts are the most challenging to draw because they take a lot of extra steps and careful measurements and a little bit of eyeballing sometimes uh, to get a good drawing. Uh, plus with rim shirts, we can actually reconstruct the vessel, which is really cool, you know, if we don't have the whole thing there. Um, this takes a certain level of familiarity with the culture and typology of their vessels, but it can be done. So how can we do this? With a very special tool called a rim chart. Um, I have actually made a very short video for you on how to use a rim chart, um, which will be in the Google Classroom for you. But more on all of this in a minute when I show you how to set up a ceramic illustration. So for now, I want to go back a little bit. I know I talk about purpose a lot, but archeologists don't really do things without a purpose. So what is the purpose of ceramics illustration specifically? Well, it goes back to our overarching primary purpose of archeological illustration, you know, to create an accurate scientific record um, with pottery or ceramics, to create a record in which vessels can be easily contrasted and compared. Um, pottery shards are one, if not the most abundant artifacts in archeology span and therefore, important and very useful um, for a variety of archeological processes. 
And as some of you may or will experience or have experienced, um, ceramics are very fat, fragile um, and illustrating them is an excellent way to make a record of them. So how can I illustrate? One of the comments or questions I hear most frequently when I tell people what I do is, how can I illustrate? I'm not an artist. <laughs> well, one of my favorite things about archeological illustration and especially ceramics is that anyone can do it. There's almost a formula to it. Um, and if you plug in the different things, you end up with an awesome and usable illustration. I didn't think of myself as like, uh, a drawer or illustrator when I first started to learn how to do it. I was terrified and didn't have a lot of confidence in myself or my abilities. But the more I did it and the more I used the formula, the more I fell in love with the discipline and my own illustrations. So here's the formula as I have laid it out for you. So we have format, which is um, your style rules. Um, and guidance plus data, you know, all your measurements and everything that you need to take and record of the artifact uh, for an accurate drawing. And then confidence. You built up the skills, you know all about this artifact, you know you can do it. All of that equals your illustration. So now that we know the formula, let's get into some regional specifics before we set up a drawing. For regional specifics of ceramic illustration, there's not a lot, um, but different parts of the world do it differently. Um, so it can be a little bit confusing going back and forth, or sometimes you might come across a journal article that, you know, has it differently and you're like, hey, wait, that's not how I've seen it before. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I don't know why we can't just have like a cohesive, um, you know, format for all archaeologists but you know um so in the uk and most of europe um you will have this so you've got your um ceramic profile the dark line um and that'll be also the thickness of your pottery wall on the left side okay and then you've got your profile um, of the pottery, which is a mirror image of the darker depth profile on the right. That's how they do it in the UK. Um, that's how they do it in most of Europe. So you might see something like this in America, um, or some other parts of the world. I actually, um, took some steps to redraw the same thing for you mostly. I didn't get in all the detail because that previous drawing actually took me a couple days to finish with all of the stippling and everything. But here you can see the American standard. Um, you've got your simple profile on the left and you've got your um, thickness uh, profile on the right. Um, that little bit at the top is because there's actually decoration that sticks out of the rim, which also needs to be shown on a drawing um, if you're doing pottery. So now that we know that, let's set up a drawing. Um, so in this video, I've done things a little bit out of order as the way I'm telling you. Um, so it's also been sped up a lot. So um, you can go back and rewatch it. Um, I'm also going to try and set up a live drawing session for you guys so you can see um, how long it takes, uh, my different processes, the different measurements. I take a lot of different measurements um, during the thing. I go back and recheck stuff because sometimes I'm not sure I saw it right. Um, so here is the drawing for you. Um, as long as everything gets done with the correct measurements, the order isn't really necessary or important. So we need the info of the shirt. Then we need to use the rim chart and figure out the diameter. Um, meanwhile, we're writing down every measurement so we don't forget something. Um, and I don't mean if you like write something down to like figure out your spacing and then you're like, oh, I wasn't sure if I got that right. I mean, you can. Um, you can also, of course, use a separate sheet of paper. I like to just make my notes on the graph paper because then it's easier for me to find them and to go back. Um, so um, we also need to use the rim chart 
before we set up the drawing, which you didn't see me do it here as um, I made a separate video for you guys doing that. Um, so then I placed the diameter line, then the line of symmetry. Then I begin by stabilizing the shirt um, and drawing the shape. Um, and then I go in with the profile on the left um, because I live and work um, in the UK, even though I'm American, obviously. Um, and the outline of the profile on the right. Then I add in the ever important uh, scale bar. <laughs> Always need your scale bar. Um, and then I begin refining and detailing the shirt. It's not a super detailed shirt, it's not decorated. I just grabbed a terracotta pot from the store, smashed it in the backyard and took the best pieces. Um, but I did add in the lip line and some stippling just for the depth and shading effect. Um, I did not have it lit from a 45 degree angle from the left as I have not completely set up my office yet. Um, so I used a pro set square um, and did the stippling from experience. That was setting up a drawing. In this week's uh, illustration activity, I will lay out, you know, kind of like a cheat sheet, a list of all of the things that um, need to be on there that I would like to see. If you're in the United States, um, feel free to do it to the American standard. If you're in the UK or elsewhere, feel free to do it um, to that standard. You can practice doing both. Um, and don't be scared to, you know, draw. They're not graded unless you would like my feedback on them um but yeah it's i mean it's illustration we got to get in there and draw so so that was ceramics um just kind of you know quick and um simple there's some other material up for you next week we will be doing lithics um which are a little more complicated in their own way um but i am looking forward to seeing your guys illustrations don't forget about the quiz um, and next week we'll be getting into lithics. Thanks guys.